destruction. What is up, everyone? It is Reggie Balseros here, aka Reggie B Photo, and today we are live, and I'll be editing your photos, um, specifically the students of my Light and Lines Photography Bootcamp. I did an open call for photo submissions, and I will be doing a monthly photo critique every single month moving forward. And this is the first monthly photo critique. If you want your photos to be critiqued in this fashion for this monthly live stream, please join my course. And the reason being is because I end up repeating the critique that I have about lighting and composition quite a few, quite a bit when it comes to these um, YouTube live stream photo critiques. So I kind of decided to moving forward to make it as students of my course who already learned kind of the basics of directional lighting and geometric composition to kind of have this as a place for them to submit their photos for us to see how they did, how they improved their skills, and for you all to kind of learn the basics of directional lighting and ge geometric composition through seeing other people's work. I think that's really the best way to demonstrate it and to see it in kind of in action and kind of let it soak into your brain um, so that you can start seeing the world in kind of like this new lens, <laughs> no pun intended, as far as photography goes. So what this is basically going to be kind of set up is I'm going to be pulling up photos on my iPad here and just kind of like scribbling on them, adding notes and giving kind of feedback about the photos. If you are here live, please feel free to ask questions on the chat. And that's pretty much how I'm going to do it. So without further ado, let's just get into the first photo. All right. So this first photo, I really, the first thing that kind of pops out to me is the, the lighting. So it does look like the lighting is coming from kind of one section overhead coming probably from about right here. 
Let me make that thicker a little bit right here. And again, I want to say if you have any questions, please feel free to um, write them down in the chat. But so when we're looking at this photo overall, the lighting you can see is coming from one direction and you can tell based on just the shadows. You can see that the shadows on the subject is kind of landing on this side right here. So you can already assume that it's coming from the top right, probably overhead from this alleyway. And there are a few things that I see that are done really well in this photo. First is there is a leading line that's coming from this kind of awning, this um, kind of out outside area. And then you have some other lines on this side serving as kind of like a subframe to lead the viewer's eye into this general area right right here. Um, another thing that I see too that's probably done intentionally is that this um, fence, or sorry, this sign is right over at top, which creates another area to, to basically f naturally frame the subject. And then even these lines right here create another frame. Um, so overall, we can see that the entire image just from the way that the lighting is the subject is pretty much the brightest part of the frame I think there is a little you could probably burn um, use a little dodge and burn tool to burn this part in just a little bit but for overall the image is really helping you to to zone in right on the subject and I think that's really awesome and I think my only kind of crit critique about this photo is maybe to have the subject either look off more in this direction right here um, or have them maybe have some type of expression just to kind of give it a more um, lively feel. Um, but as far as the subject placement, I think this is an awesome photo. It does look like it's like a travel photo or something like that. And I think this one is super well executed. So we have another photo, I think, from the same photographer, and there are a lot of cool things going on for this photo, too. So first, the first thing I see is that the photo is pretty much centered. So in most cases, um, people tend to recommend photos to not be centered. But I kind of teach photography a little bit differently, that if you don't have a reason to put a subject off to the side, I'd rather have them in the center. So good job on that one. And I see a couple things going on um, because they're centered. You can see that these little kind of like structures right here are all mirrored on each side. So they're coming from that side. So the photographer really took the time and attention to create this pattern. And then the subject here is going to be the middle part of the pattern. That's a really a really subtle part of the photograph that really makes a great impact. And I think also between just thinking about the shadows and the highlights of the image, we have a big giant kind of like shadowy part from the trees on this side and on the right side. And then in the middle, we have the highlights that kind of create this interesting leading line that points straight to the subject as well. And um, as far as the natural framing goes or sub framing for the subject, the photographer was also able to s center the subject right in the middle of this little window. And then we have a cool kind of line at the bottom that just kind of anchors the photo. And I think if I had to kind of give any type of feedback, again, it would just be to have the subject maybe either looking off. Um, whoops. What happened? Hold on. I totally went to a different thing here. I lost my... Here we go. Sorry about that. This one. Okay, got it. Alright, so I got it back. Um, the only thing that I would give as some sort of feedback is to just have your subject either, if they don't want to be posing or doing anything super lively, just have them just kind of look off to the side, maybe this direction this way. And that will give your subject a little bit more just kind of like, you're more documenting your subject interacting with the area rather than just standing straight and looking forward. Um, especially because these all both seem kind of like travel photos. So it's always great to take one photo of your, you know, your travel mate looking straight at you, but also don't be afraid to have them do something different, look off, or she could also turn around um, to kind of give a sense of the scale of the area. But yeah, these, these photos have a lot going on, these first two photos, um, but you can tell that the photographer really took a lot of time and effort to really put all these things together, and I just wanted to point all these things out because in 
the Light and Lines Photography Bootcamp, we really go into deep about composition and lighting and even just how the, s the highlights and the shadows of the photo kind of are composed all together. All right. So we have a photo here of a horse and it looks like um, it is eating or just kind of like up here. And we're gonna dive into a little bit on this one. Um, so there are a couple things that I see going on here for this photo. Um, first things first, I love how close the photo is to the horse. You can really feel and see like all the little hairs coming straight from like right over here from the horse's like snout. Um, and I also like the, the whatever lens or the bokeh that you have of this this lens. It really creates a cool character as far as the out of focus elements right here. Um, and as far as the lighting goes, I really like the kind of like backlit um, nature of this photo because it creates these little almost just kind of like almost more angelic type aura for this this horse um, because the, the little hairs are all backlit and you can kind of see those. Um, I think my biggest critique would be to stand a little bit more off to the right and give a little bit more breathing room on this side of the photo. Maybe even just like scooting over this way like more scooting over to the right that way you can kind of maybe have cropped the photo here and then give a little bit more room on this side um, is how I probably would have framed it um, another thing I would have also wanted to see tried is to maybe have your camera held up a little bit higher so we didn't cut off the horse's um, head or scoot back just a little bit more um, another thing that you could also do is just see if you can get super close to kind of like this now um, because it looks like it's kind of like a more wider angle lens. Um, but yeah, I think as far as kind of like just the subject matter and the impact of the photo in general, this is a very like high impact photo just because of how close you are to the specific um, subject. And I think for me, it's really just making sure that um, you create some type of motivation behind if you're putting the photo off to the rule of thirds, off to the, the right thirds, um, that there's some type of thing motivating that interest. In this case, I don't really see anything other than just wanting to frame it more neatly and having the subject padding on both sides to be more equal. All right, so we have a portrait here, and I really like kind of like the dynamic lighting of this image. As you can see, a common theme for a lot of these photos from people who've taken my courses really focusing on one source of light and generally this is a directional kind of like low angle sun or a backlit photo or in this case what I call like window light or cave light which is where the light is filtering from one specific location and everything else is dark so it looks like this entire thing is like more of like a tunnel like you can see right here it's very dark on the back right here um, and there is obviously a window or like a break in the fence that all the light is coming through right here, which is going onto the subject's face. So there's a couple things that I see here is one, I really love the leading lines again. So we have this kind of leading right here, leading straight to the subject, and even these ones are kind of pointing at the subject right there. Um, and you also have a subframe that's kind of boxing in the subject right here. And and the directional lighting sh coming straight from the right is very, very, very nice. I think the biggest thing that I see that's a little bit distracting is I think this part of th the structure is actually blocking the light from the subject's face because on her jacket, it's very, very beautifully lit. And then when you get to the face, it ends up being in shadow, which I don't think um, if you could have had her kind of slouch down or s sit down on something so that she could have her face in this area, it would have changed the lighting, I think, a lot. And also if you had her turn her nose a little bit more this way, so toward toward the right side, you can also hi really highlight the face. Um, so I think that's the biggest opportunity that I see. Other than that, I really love the processing of this photo. And I think the overall kind of like pose and how she's kind of leaning on the the fence and interacting with it is really awesome. So good job on this one. And I think as far as post-processing goes, whenever you have a really bright area of the photo that isn't the subject, you could always just do a little bit of dodging and burning just to make sure that it doesn't stand out as much because your first, the first part of your 
when you look at an, a photo for the first time, your first impression is going for your eye to be to dart to the brightest parts of the image. And if we look at it here, the brightest parts of the image are going to be here, here, and even like this part right here. And if the intent of the photo is for the subject to be the main focus, um, even that, if you look at the brightest part of that part, it's going to be right here. So really just taking the time to make sure, like looking at your photo, even before you take the, your camera to your eye and think about where the brighter parts of the image are. Um, but again, I think I love the fact that you have your, your subframe right here, the leading line going this way, and you really took the care to get that directional light straight from this um, opening. And I think also, and what's cool is because you use this, you know, tunnel light, there's there's lighting coming in from the front and there's also lighting coming from the back that gives a subtle rim light that gives you that separation from the hat. Because if you didn't do that, um, you wouldn't be able to see the hat and it would be blending in straight to the background, but it has a very subtle rim light that helps it all stand out on the side. If anyone has any questions as uh, I'm going through, even if it's not related specifically to the photo critique, please feel free to um, uh, jot them in the chat. All right, so we have this next photo. It looks like it's a very snowy day and it's a portrait. And um, I'm going to kind of give my impressions of this photo. So for the first part, I think the lighting is beautiful. Um, this is a good example of having the a short lit photo. And basically what that means is that the shadow side of the lighting is closest to the camera. So the shadow side would be kind of like her cheek right here, and it's closer to the camera, and then the, f the side where the light is coming from, which is this side, is on the opposite side. And what this does, it creates a nice flattering, almost like slimming effect where you have the face uh, in highlight and then the cheeks and other parts of the body in um, shadow. And that's really, really nice execution of short lighting. Um, and as far as this portrait goes, I really like the fact that the photo is centered um, because there isn't any specific thing that's motivating a rules of thirds. Um, and then as far as opportunities to work on, I think a few things that I see is first, I would have wanted you to try to step like maybe one or two steps to the left. And that way you could get the leading line of this part and this other part of the pathway. You could have framed her shoulders or his shoulders in the middle. So the subject shoulders could have been in the middle. Um, and then what you could have also done uh, is um, find a way so that you weren't having the car kind of in here, um, even if it was moving backwards or forwards. Like for example, if you had went down the path more to like this spot, then the car wouldn't have been in the frame anymore. I do see that there are trees in the background and usually I'm a stickler for like, oh, looks like the trees are growing out of the subject's head, but I think you kind of had to manage as best you could. Um, and it seemed like you're more utilizing the leading line of the path. Um, so I'm not gonna <laughs> go into too tough on that one, but it's something to always be on the lookout for what your background looks like. Is there things coming out that will distract from your subject in the background? Is there things that look like they will start growing out of your heads? Those are things that you need to kind of watch out for. And um, I do like the fact that you had the darker part of the background right here um, behind the subject as opposed to having her su head framed here because what that allows it to do is to have her um, kind of like gray hat kind of like stand out from the background and I think that is really great execution for this portrait. I think from post-processing perspective, I do think it's a little bit cool for my personal preference, but if that's your editing style, then I'm all for it, especially because it's snow, it's gonna have a little bit more co cooler tones, and that's something that we should be really thinking about in our post-processing. It's not only just for accuracy, but you know, a, a vibe or mood that we want to communicate. All right, so we have this next photo, and I think it is a super awesome, beautiful, kind of like portrait of some, I think five kids here, and it looks almost like a band photo. I think this one is really, really cool. I really like this one. And um, so what I see right here in the beginning is just kind of like the lighting is really great and coming from, I think it's a cloudy day or like either a sunny day with very directional light that's coming from the right hand side right here and you can always tell where the light is coming from just based on the shadows um actually no it looks like it's 
Yeah. So it's probably coming from the right-hand side because you can see the shadows on this kid's face, this kid's face. That They're all kind of landing on this side. So that's probably where the lighting is coming from. But as far as framing goes, I like the fact that you kind of layered the the composition so that the front part um, is is composed in the front. And then you have the background um, to have the other kids kind of layered in in the back. I think this is really awesome. I do think there is a couple opportunities that you could have had to make this image even stronger. The first thing is to think about, again, subject padding. So you want to look at the subjects like right shoulder right here and kind of frame that so that the gap in between is also going to have the same gap on this side because here it kind of intersects the bottom corner of the frame whereas this one has a little bit of gap. So I think just being mindful of that and making sure it's even so that that part is centered or at least has some motivation for the reason why it's that way. And also I think the horse horizon line is a little bit skewed. So I think this would be straight this way. So just really thinking about that and correcting in that a little bit. Um, I think another opportunity you could have had too is if you had stepped back just a little bit and pointed the camera, like brought the camera up, panned it up just a little bit, you could have got it so that this child's head um, had more breathing room and basically wasn't intersecting this kid's leg. So basically, I would have tried to see if there's a composition where you can have this step be a nice like barrier or border in between his uh this this child's head and this kid's leg in the background hopefully that kind of makes sense and um i think even being able to crop in a little bit closer from that side would have also created a more uh sh stronger uh kind of impact as far as the layering goes so i did want to address someone in the chat we have calvin um asked how can he submit his photo so these photos are basically all submitted on a monthly basis before each live stream um, i'm going to do an open call for the monthly live stream to all the light and lines photo boot camp students uh, in a couple weeks and there's going to be another stream in march so again these uh photo critiques are basically done specifically as a way for people within the the boot camp to submit their assignment photos or photos that they've been working on in order to showcase their new skills as far as lighting and uh, composition goes. Unfortunately, this isn't open to the entire audience. Just again, because when I I found that when I do photo critiques for my general audience, it ends up being the same type of critique, um, and that 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 ends up so I instead of having to be able to repeat those things over and over and over. I'd rather just have it so that people who come from the same skill set that I'm looking for as far as lighting composition, I can be able to hone those in better. So that's basically the way that we'll be, I'll be having submissions for these types of critiques. So yeah, all right. And if you wanted to see a link um, for the course, if you wanted to, if you're interested in the course or submitting a, a photo in the future, um, just check out the link in the description of this video and you could kind of go from there. If you have any questions about the specific course or future photo critiques, feel free to shoot me an email or a DM at, at RedGBPhoto and I'll be able to help you out in that regard. All right, so let's get back to the photo critique. All right, so we'll move on to the next photo. And I think we have Carlos is on the call or on the live stream. So this is a photo um, I th it looks like from a landscaper. I forgot wh what this place is called. If you can <laughs> name it in the chat. But basically, so we have the first thing I see is a very vast kind of like cavern or landscape here. And then we have a subject directly in the middle. Um, and let's think about when it comes to landscape photos, it's always about really coming up with a focal point for your image. And um, typically the lighting or the lines is what's going to create that. So what I see here first is leading lines that are going sweeping through. And then um, also coming down here, I do see that the lighting at the top is a little bit brighter. Um, so I, al I, would always, I would suggest coming up a way to kind of either darkening it or making it not as distracting or having the subjects lighting a little bit brighter so that our eye goes down here first. Um, and then we have the subject straight in the middle right here. So as far as subject placement, if there isn't any 
lines that are motivating it, then obviously you're going to put it in the center. But I, I like that there's a, some sweeping lines here and also coming down here. And then you have the subject in the middle. There are some like little rocks in the bottom. So I'm curious to see how it would have looked like if you got really down low and use one of these rocks kind of like in the foreground at the bottom of the photo to kind of sandwich kind of like the composition. Um, that would have been interesting to kind of see and you might have been able to crop it closer and have less of this bright part here. Um, but in general, I think as far as photographing in these types of areas, I really like the the lighting that's coming here. And just an, another type of idea for you to think about next time is really when you have your subject standing in here, what you could do is you could have them stand kind of like in the in the middle, kind of like right here like that and then depending on the lighting and how it's falling i would think this way so if you had the subject look off over their shoulder to one direction then you can have them kind of like looking up at the scale of the photo of the area and then having them kind of from the profile rather from the back um, i found that if you have somebody coming straight from the back when you're taking kind of like a environmental portrait they really have to be very clearly cut out from the background. In this case, there's some shadows here and some highlights here that you could have maybe um, tried to find some place where she he or she was like fully in highlight. Or what you can do is what I'm saying here is just having the subject kind of be more in profile and looking up at the landscape and it isn't going to be as critical. So just think about those things next time you're having kind of a subject walking through. Another thing you could have done too is having the subject be closer to the front and having kind of like their head here. It's getting a little bit busy here, but like maybe like their shoulders are like this and their head here. And then you're kind of like using them as a foreground element to lead into looking at this landscape so that our eye could look at the person and kind of dart up to the top. Um, that's another way that you can think about it. And I wanted to say hello to David Solka, who said he's was tuning in from Poland. Thank you so much for tuning in during your night shift. All right, so we have a, another photo. These are out of order, too, so if you're looking for your other photo, Carlos, it, it's toward the end. So here is another photo, um, and it looks like it is this kind of like ocean scene with a... I don't know what this the structure is, but uh, it's very, you can really feel the <laughs> epic kind of weather. It does look a little hazy and misty. So let's dive into this one a little bit. So when I look at a photo like this, very minimal, there are two different ways that I personally would like to, to frame it. Um, first off, the exposure here and the vibe of the photo looks very almost like turbulent and like, hectic and I think that's what the photographer was trying to convey so good job on this I do like the color contrast that you chose so you have the nice blue all in the background and then we have some of the whites and then we have this stark kind of like orange from this sign really love the contra color contrast that we have here um, and then the kind of the sense of minimalism with the photo we have everything kind of like open and we have the ocean waves here and then we have this random structure that almost creates a contrast of like modernity versus like natural environment um, I think that's really cool so but I think what I'm seeing here as far as the composition goes there are two ways that I personally would have wanted I would have shot it differently um, and this just another consideration for you to make if this is something that you did intentionally then by all means roll with the way that you want to shoot it but so this is like slightly not in the middle between this side and this side this one's just a little bit longer and i wish we nudge this uh this crop just a little bit that way and this is something that you could have done entirely just in the crop tool and also making sure that this um this line right here is like fully straight um because it looks like it's tilted this way ever so slightly so just really taking the care to kind of shift everything over a little bit I think would have would have made a bigger impact so it'd probably be like right here is where the structure is if you scooted it just a little bit I know it's it's minuscule it looks like it's minuscule but when you have those kind of like exact placements for these types of photos it really has a really kind of more impactful kind of visual impact um so really kind of look for those kind of things and 
Um, another way that you could have done it too is kind of taking the cues from the leading lines of the ocean. So there's a swooping wave right here. If you were using a zoom or you had flexibility to kind of zoom out, I would have made it so that I can draw a little sketch just right here of like the photo where the ocean is kind of coming like this. And then the structure is here. And then everything else is very minimal. Um, I think that would have been an impactful photo too. It wouldn't have been centered. It wouldn't have even subject padding, but it would have uh, followed uh, another rule that I really like to follow is kind of like the diagonals. So going from one corner to the other um, is something that I like to do. And having your subject fall in line somewhere there, kind of more weighted to the bottom or the top, that's one way that you could have um, framed this image. But in general, like the environment and the scene and the you know being in the right place in the right time to capture this photo is phenomenal it's something that i don't really do a lot of is adventuring out to other places and landscapes to photograph just the area usually there's a subject and i like the fact that you pulled out a subject to photograph using this color contrast so we have another photo um, from the same photographer and this one is really really cool timing as far as getting these swooping waves right here everything falling um, and then we have it layered with these two birds which is really looks like almost like too too perfect like I really like the fact that it creates this like this weighting so you have everything weighted very heavy here and these two birds kind of balance the upper portion of the photo and then you still have some of the waves at the top this is really really awesome and it's something that I I am envious of your skills as far as a kind of like a landscape environment photographer because it's something that I don't have too much practice in. And I like the fact that you have this perfect timing to catch everything all together. I also get this sense of feeling, which is not a specific thing that I teach in my course, but like a feeling of like a, an S pattern like this. I don't even know if that's a, a compositional tool, but it creates like an almost implicit leading line here. Um, and I think that's something really awesome that you kind of created. I do think I'm trying to see if there's any specific part of the photo that is sharp. So it looks like the bird in the background is really sharp and then the one in the front isn't so sharp and then the one in the, the stuff in the front, maybe it's because of motion blur. So I would really just look at your settings again to see if you wanted everything to be blurred, that's totally fine. But it looks like this bird is a little bit sharper and sort of the waves in the background. Um, so make sure that your depth of field is is optimal to cr to capture all the way from the front to the back to this bird at the uh, at the back. So really making sure the night the photo is all sharp and crisp, I think would have took an even good image to to like to make it like really really great as far as um, having everything nice and crisp. So take a look at your settings for next time. All right, so we have another image here. It looks like it's a. Uh, someone walking on the beach looking back at the camera um, so I really like this photo there is a, a the placement of this subject I think is really calculated in the sense that she is placed kind of in between here so her head is in between these two layers because sometimes people will have their subjects head kind of like intersecting here and I try not to cross intersecting lines because it creates this distracting element um, and the person is walking this way. I think the way that the photo is actually laid out though, I would have wanted to see the subject walking the opposite way, so this way, and kind of like looking out that way because the lighting is coming from this side. So it would have been interesting to see or if the person was walking this way and then looking over their shoulder that way, that could have been something too. Whenever I have a subject that's doing something a little bit more candid so for example if you're on vacation with your spouse or your kids and they're doing something if i have a composition in mind sometimes i say just like look at you know if this is an adult just look over at the ocean to your over your left shoulder or if it's a little kid like where's the sun like i literally say like where's the sun to my kids and they'll look up at it and it'll create this really nice highlight on their face so that's a good trick to kind of do if to create more um kind of like dramatic lit photos because it creates like a highlight on the face um, and the shadow on the backside. And I think that's really an impactful thing. I do like the fact that you have this, um, this nice reflection, this kind of like silhouetted reflection on the bottom. 
Um, I'm always someone who wants to see how would it look if you got a little bit lower and got some of this foreground texture from the ocean and this th like the sandy water. So um, definitely try that next time. But I think overall laid out, it looks very good. Um, I think for some reason though, I do wish there was a little bit less negative space here just to kind of make the photo feel like you're not looking too much out into the clouds because there isn't very much texture in the clouds t after this part. So just really looking at your photo overall and making sure there's something interesting or something spatially that, that lays out altogether. And if there's something that doesn't quite fit right or you could get rid of, don't feel too bad about just getting rid of a little bit of it just to make the photo that much more impactful. All right, so we have another photo here of two kiddos. And I like how soft the light is here. So we have some soft light coming from, it looks like from like the left side right here. This way. And we have the subjects just kind of like interacting. And we have them, um, you know, a nice, just kind of like lines just coming toward the subjects here. I do think as far as the composition goes, I don't see how much this is doing for us on this side, especially this dead grass. There are some flowers here that are nice to capture, but I feel like weighted wise, I would have wanted the photo to look more like this. And I also would have been curious to see if you step this way a little bit, you could have got this part and this part to be more of a, a subframe that's fully behind them because part of these flowers are behind this, the subject here and it's empty on this side where we could have stepped this way to shift this child's head that way and that child's head that way within the frame and you would have had more of an empty background where their heads would be um, so just thinking about how you can clean up the area behind their heads is something that I'm always trying to think of so this photo though I really like the moment um, great capture on the subject's face here just getting these natural smiles the subject the subject just like pointing at the environment so and also just like the colors um, a little bit more muted um, but I do think as far as seeing all your other photographs this is a look that you like to strive for so I like the editing here all right so we have a wedding photograph and this one is a really really great moment it does look like it's taken in low light I don't know if there's any flash perhaps um, but it looks like I'm seeing some lighting coming <coughs> from like where the subject or sorry where the photographer is coming this way and then we have some room light on the background probably from these environmental lights so I like that it's dynamic and the subject's head is popping out from the background it's very centered here um, and in this case like if I was photographing something like this I would probably center it too but I see this string of bokeh lights here and I would have been interested to see if you scooted over this way and got down. So you as a photographer get down a little bit lower. It would have moved the subject's heads kind of in this area. And that way it would have been framed by the bokeh lights. And then their heads would be above it. So that's something that I see as an opportunity here. It's not guaranteed that it was a, a realistic opportunity. And also you have to time it with this the couple because they're dancing so you have to wait till they rotate just perfectly but in general I do like the moment that you captured it's very genuine kind of expressions um, and in this case you can't really control how the subjects like look um, I do think that they are looking a little bit away from the camera but it's not something you can really control other than waiting for the timing one thing that I like to do is wait for the timing of one of the subjects to be more looking toward the camera just a little bit and then a snap the photo there. So for example, if you wanted to the feature the bride, you can wait a little bit until her nose is pointed toward you just a little bit more, snap the photo, and then wait till they circle around again and wait till the groom is looking toward the camera a little bit more and snap the photo. Um, in this case, it's neutral, but neither subject is really prominent nor hidden. So it's kind of like this middle ground. Um, I would also just try to, as far as getting coverage, to see if you can get one of those ones where each of them is featured as well. But overall, I really like this photo. Um, I like the rim light and I like the bokeh of everything. I think just always trying to look for these pockets of negative space, because if you just look overall at the photo minus the subjects, what I see is a little bit of area here, 
we have some like visual interest and then we have a huge pocket of negative space if you see a pocket of negative space it's a good opportunity to move the subject's faces there and it would create a different type of photo. All right, so we have this, wow, this is a really nice layered photo um, because I think we have reflection as well as a neon sign and then something in the background here. Um, I don't even know where the, if the neon sign is inside or outside. Um, so some things that I see here is we have like a, like there's a police car here there's a car here sign we have the neon sign a s the pole and then obviously there's an american flag in the background that is kind of like the base of the background so some things that i see here first off this is a really cool type of street shot um you know still life natural landscape shot really great colors going on a lot of color contrast a lot of visual interest I think to tighten it up, the one thing that I would recommend is just making sure to really straighten the photo just a little bit so that we have this pole a little bit more straight. I'm not sure how much that will just skew the lines, the stripes of the flag. And then also just giving a little bit more padding or um, equal cropping between each side of this, each slider sign. So if you're going to have this much padding here replicated on this side, or if you want to keep it this close, then you would have probably cropped closer to like that. Just a stickler for that, but I'm always trying to make it a little bit more even. And if there is going to be a little bit more space to kind of motivate it, like have something to be able to be found there or to create mystery there. Um, so just always look out for those things. All right, so we have a what do we have here? We have a car and kind of like parked in a parking lot. I'm not sure if this specific thing is not notable or just kind of there in the environment. Um, so I'm just looking at this from kind of like a layers perspective. We have nice yellow right here. We have this shape of this textured wall and then we have more shapes here. So I really like that you're able to spot all these natural shapes within the environment. Um, when it comes to these type of photographs, though, I think really just thinking about, again, tightening up the angles. So if you see this line right here, it's a little bit skewed. So really just trying to straighten it straight up so that we have a little bit more geometric uh, kind of shapes to everything. And then also, I think I do think it is a little bit dark as far as like exposure goes through my liking, but it definitely lean into whatever taste that you prefer. Um, and also, I would have just liked to see what it would look like too if you walked this way a little bit and shot more straight onto this wall and s how that would have laid out everything. But in general, I do like the fact that we have this kind of like swooping weighted. So we have like a shape here, a shape here, and a car here. And it creates this nice kind of like visual flow to go back and forth as you explore this photo. All right, so here we have kind of a, I think it's like a quinceanera or something portrait. And I see very even light. And I like, this is looks like it's a very kind of formal standard pose. Um, so nothing too extravagant, but it's very solid. Something that someone would print, put on their wall, a relative or something like that. And what I see here is a careful use of natural subframing right here. I think this photo is from Eddie, and he's been killing it lately. Uh, after he took the course, he's been able to book a lot of gigs, and also I've been seeing his work really level up, especially his subframing. So here we have that, and it creates a nice, um, especially because the silhouette that you create with the subject here kind of balances out. And if you look at it here, like there's a lot of highlighted in the background. Some people try to bring it down and manage all this dynamic range, but in this case, because it is... Um, a subframe, what it does, it helps the subject to stand out from the background. One thing I like to teach is kind of like shadow, highlight, shadow. And in this case, you have, if you think about it from like the perspective, there is a, a big highlight in the background. And then this part is actually in the shade. And so the subject is in the shade too, because the background here is where the highlight is. So it creates this nice um, separation by having the shadow part here and then the subject here and then you have the nice separation in the middle so if you ever want to make your subject really stand out really think about 
alternating between shadows, highlights, and shadows in your composition. And this is a really textbook execution of that. All right, so we have another landscape photo. I think this one's from Carlos as well. And I li I really like this type of photo. It's probably how I would have composed the photo because it's nice and centered. And we have the leading lines going this way and this way. And the brightest part of the frame is at the end. So it leads our eye straight to the end. We have nice swooping kind of like arches of the trees. And in general, this is just a very common, peaceful looking scene. Uh, because I'm always in a perspective of trying to push it a little bit more just to see. Um, it would have skewed the leading lines a little bit, but I, I'm just curious if you took an alternate shot where you got closer toward these rocks here to create some foreground interest. Um, because here, this is more kind of like an eye level shot. So I'd like to see what it would look like if you took kind of like a f closer to the foreground photo. So always look at that. But this is very, very awesome execution and this is a great example some people ask like oh is this course good <laughs> for people who don't photograph human subjects and this is a testament to that because Carlos mainly photographs landscapes and you can see great execution of leading lines a little subframe here with lighting in the in the in the background and also just like these archways that he kind of leveraged and also just a centered photo so this is a really neat and geometric photo for kind of like a more natural landscape which is something you don't see commonly done too much when landscape photography all right so here is a looks like a airplane wreck or something um, and i think for this case this type of photo is really just a matter of you know sense of scale and i think it's very centered we have um, the trees kind of framing this airplane. Um, when I first saw this photo, I didn't notice this subject here. So I don't know if there's a way that you can have the subject stand out a little bit more, maybe not be as blocked by the wreckage here, maybe like standing here, or if you're allowed to like stand on top of it, if, if that's safe. Um, or again, there's another, there's something that I also see as an opportunity is there's this negative space here where your subject could have been standing closer to the foreground a little bit out of focus like this looking at this thing so kind of like an implicit like lead into the photo through the subject to the airplane that's something to kind of think about as well um, but as far as this photo is I think always experimenting with using different foreground elements is is a great way to use you know foreground layering within landscape photos so don't ever um, once you take this kind of like solid standard shot of the entire scene, see what you can play with as far as foreground elements just to break it up and create something that kind of breaks up here or maybe has a natural frame to the image. All right. So here is another photo. This photo is super, super dope. It's something that I feel like I would have taken in this, whatever this scene is. But so there are a few things going on here. First, we have a natural kind of like subframe here but it's layered with all these other kind of subframes created with these trees that go down so your sub your eye just darts straight to the subject mainly because there's this very bright light coming here and you can even see these little rays kind of popping off so that effect is super cool it looks very angelic and it looks like this is a maternity photo so i really like that execution of this photo um, and this is also the thumbnail for the, the photo critique. I think what's also cool, um, something that I might have done, is try to crop in a little bit closer right here. Or get a little bit lower without interrupting this, though. Always just keep this as a priority. It looks like that's what you were doing. Um, you can usually change focal lengths, too, to see how that might come out. Um, another option, too, is if you got lower and brought down your exposure there could be an opportunity for you to have a silhouette that also highlighted uh, the little baby bump there um, and have the trees all in the background in the in shadow that's a different option that you could have had here but this is a really great execution for this portrait I really really like how this one looks and a uh, good job on this photo cool all right so here we have kind of like a natural 
documentary style kind of like photo of this baby a lot of people like to photograph babies like being all like sleeping or whatever but here we have like real life and i like the fact that this one is in black and white um it's hard to see where the lighting is and i think the the biggest thing for this is it is a documentary photo so looking more of kind of like the content so we have all these hands with the contrast between the hands of the the adult here and the baby with all the other hands um but just really taking the time to, if you can move your lighting a little bit, to have it so that it's more flattering. Because the hair does kind of go into shadow. And it does look like it's more indoor light. So I think that's where I would be just trying to figure out if there's a window or something that the client can do to make it a little more brighter. Um, but overall, I think this moment here is gold. I really like this one. I probably would have oriented the camera um, counterclockwise just a little bit. Or no, so uh, clockwise, so that you could frame it so that th the top is this way more. Um, just so that we get rid of some of this negative space that isn't really doing much, or this side. So, um, But I do like the fact that it kind of complements this, this face and this <laughs> face. I don't know if that was intentional, but that was a really nice catch there. And then we have another photo of this baby. Um, this one has very, very nice light coming from it, um, and it's nice and centered, I think, but because we have these hands coming from this side, I would have wanted to crop it a little bit here so that there's, l since there's no negative space on this side, we can balance it out by having less negative space on that side. And another thing, too, is just thinking about if you have another light, you can use this light source to kind of break up subject from the background because they this this baby does blend in straight into the background you can't see their hair so just thinking about if there is another light that you can pop up there and have it separate or if there's some way that light can be reflected onto the back of the baby's head just think about that for next time but i like the bold reds this is a very cute photo and i like the hands they give a sense of scale for the baby as well as um, the parents or the, the adults taking care of the kiddo so we have another nice family photo here, and we have very nice directional light coming in here. Um, I think this, overall, this is a hard to do, to have the baby and the parents all looking at the same time, so kudos on that. That's a very difficult thing to do. I think my biggest point of feedback, again, is still going to be the separation. I'm um, having some type of lighting to separate them from the background, as well as the hair as well. Um, and just thinking about how you can do that, especially if you have a black background, how you can have the subject pop out from the back just a little bit, um, especially because it has a stark contrast versus like this very bright part of his hand here. Cool. All right, so we still have a few more photos to go. Um, here we have like a nice street scene and we have Let's see, we have a nice reflection here, and I like the fact that it kind of gets all blurred right here, and all the lines are very, very straight, which is something that makes my brain makes my brain feel good, <laughs> just having everything lined up straight. So we have like the leading line that goes this way to the end of the block, and we have these lines here. So overall, this is a very nice execution of this busy photo. Uh, I'm not sure how close you were to the ground for this one, but I'm always in the mindset of if I can get closer to the reflection to see how that would have looked like. So then maybe you could have cropped it less. Uh, sorry. Where is it? Somewhere right here and have more reflection at the bottom. That's something that I would have tried to see. And then... Um, also, just having any type of foreground element they can use in the front is something that's also something that I try to look for as well. But overall, as a scene shot, I think this one is super solid, and I don't really have too much feedback for this particular photo. All right, here we have, kind of looks like a party shot or something like that. So a few things that I see going on here is I really, really love the bokeh that's going on in the background here. And then we have a cool rim light at the back. Th this blue rim light gives contrast for the lighting and also color contrast because it's blue. And then you have the green highlight here. Um, the subject is lit from, you know, 
the right hand side. I don't know if this was lit by the photographer or this was ambient lighting within the space, but overall I really like that. I do think this highlight here is a little bit distracting. It's something that you could maybe Photoshop out or not, but just watch out for that next time just because it does look well placed as far as like it's not intersecting the subject, but it is something that looks a little bit, it's a super bright hotspot within the photo. Always think about like whatever these really bright things are, if they have a place of meaning within the photo or distract from the subject. So I like this. This is a very cool exercise in um, using directional lighting on a subject. Um, just pure execution as well as also having a really interesting bokeh background. Um, this is very, very solid. Ooh, this is nice. So here is a food photograph. I, I really, I see a lot of things going on here too. I can see how you look this one. So I really, really like this. So we have very soft lighting coming from the front and you can tell because there's shadow right here coming off the side and shadows coming off these little I don't know, these blueberries or chocolate or something like that and in the background in order to create some contrast from this cherry there is a ray of light here that's hidden in the background somewhere that's splashing onto this plant and also shining onto this planter um, and it, I like this because it has a accent light from the background it creates a visual like brighter negative space for this cherry to stand out and it gives some color contrast to the photo because it is warmer and as far as composition goes um that also is really nicely done because we have a if the f if the this is plate was just on the table by itself there would be nothing framing it but because we have this little plant here and this like pot from the plant it creates this nice subframe for this cherry stem to stick out and then it cr creates this clean cutout for this part of the plate um, and I think when it comes to food photography you tend to crop out corners and that's just a stylistic thing and then we also have foreground framing of whatever this is in the green there's greenery in the front so it really looks like everything really fits perfectly into place and I really like this photo this is a really great photo as far as food photography goes and just photography in general so good job on this one I know where this place is. So this is from uh, California Adventure uh, Adventures Campus. And I, I've taken a similar shot of this. So I really like this type of photo. I think you've even photographed it more pulled back than I have. Um, but what I, s I see a few things here. And we have a subframe here. We have another one coming there. We have this one. And we even have like, you know, a symmetry going on this way as far as the lighting goes. So that's really awesome. And then we have some color contrast of the purple with the the ambiance of the space and nice little neat lines here that frame everything. And then you have subject interest, human interest in the inside. So I think that's something that's really, really done well. Um, for this particular photo, there's always, always I try to think about like if you could crop a little bit tighter or get lower to the ground, what would that look like? So always just trying to take that photo as well. But I do like the lighting differences where you have a silhouette here and then a brighter part in the in the middle and then it goes dark again. So again, that kind of like shadow, highlight shadow kind of creates that visual interest um, that really makes a photo to pop. All right, so we have this one looks like it's a exercise from the course for um, natural framing or foreground framing. Um, so we have a backlit subject here and then we have a kind of like array of like plants or leaves and then we have the subject in the middle and I think as far as kind of like an extra one of the photo assignments is probably what this is from this is a great execution of that because we have identified a backlit photo and then we have foreground framing um, in this case I think just having a this this really is a camera aware shot. So if that's what you're going for, that is great. But also just trying to come up with a little bit more story or emotion behind it, even if you had her maybe like laughing a little bit more. Um, I do think one thing that I see is that the subject is a little bit darker and everything in the background looks a little bit brighter. So trying to change that ratio so that the subject is a little bit brighter so they don't kind of get lost in it. That would be my feedback for this particular image. 
in here, this is something that I, I was looking for in this previous image, is it's similar framing. Um, so the, the lighting and the the foreground framing is pretty much the same, but I would probably crop in here, like on this side, and then maybe have her turn her nose that way a little bit more and over her right shoulder. That would have been created a cool image. Maybe even getting closer to these leaves a little bit so it doesn't intersect her head and there's more breathing room. Um, and also maybe getting a little bit lower. So those are a few things that I think that would make this image look a little bit um, different, maybe have a little bit more, more impact, but definitely experiment when you're c photographing through kind of layers. Um, but I love the experimentation with these two photos. Here we have two cats just chilling. Um, I like how the all the lighting is really coming from this window and it's kissing this nose right here. That's really cool. And then as far as composition goes, um, it really looks like we're really honing in just on the moment. Um, the I don't think there is a real good way to have any type of um, subframing or anything, but I do like the inclusion of part of the bed here is used as a foreground layer to kind of lead in and kind of sandwich in between these two things. So it creates this like window for your eye to kind of go straight at to for this moment that's happening between these two cats. So I really, really like that. And I do like the fact that there is a backlight that is creating this, you know, texture for this cat right here. Um, so some things I see going on here, and I really think this is a really great snapshot of pets just kind of having a nice little moment or nap time moment. And we have this portrait here, really nice even lighting on this subject. And I think we also have, it's nice and centered. And it when, when it comes to a camera wear photo, if you don't have a reason for it to be at the third, don't bother <laughs> making it at third. I think a lot of people try to make photos at a third just for no reason at all. In this case, if this is just a snapshot, I really like this. This is just a well done, it looks like there's maybe bounce flash in this area. And I think overall it's a solid execution of a directionally lit photo coming, looks like it's coming more from bounced off of the ceiling, um, maybe to over to the right a little bit, it's hard to tell. Um, but one way you can even step up this a little bit more is if you got closer to a wall, say if you had a wall over toward your right shoulder, you can bounce the flash into the wall to the right and it would create more of a contrast to your light coming from this side and more shadows on this side. So always just think about in addition to just clean bound flash, can you do something where you have directional side lighting? Um, just think about different opportunities like that. And here we have a solid portrait here. I love the, the bokeh in the background. It looks like it's more of an even, probably even blue hour. It looks like a blue hour day and we have um, Kind of like a leading line in foreground framing from here. So I like the fact that we have this kind of sense of framing, even though there's not an actual subframe in, in the background, there is a sense of like just framing the eye to look straight here based on the colors and the, the, the lighting ratios. Everything is dark here. There's some darkness over here. Gives you a straight to the subject, which is the brightest part of the scene. So this is, as far as like a snapshot of a family member just in the scene, this is really, really solid. I don't have any complaints here. And I love the fact that the subject padding is even like you didn't just throw it off to a third for no reason at all. And the subject padding even at the top is even as well. That's something that I've critiqued in the past for other people's photos. And I think if we cropped it a little bit tighter here, it might have made it a little bit more cleaner. But um, especially if it was a four by five or eight by 10 print. And I recognize this photo. So this is a um, the same photo that uh, this is from Christopher. Um, he took this photo as his one of his first photos, also his redo photo at the end of the boot camp. And this is the same place again. So you, he's capitalizing on trying to really maximize this this bridge that he always uses. And you can see that there is a nice kind of like subframe going on here, and it creates this silhouette between this arm and this arm. I like the fact that you mirrored both arms to match the bridge. I can see what you did there and you have all the negative space in the background here because there's a lot of busy trees in the background that he's photographed this location before and he got low so that the, he can have the subject's head in the background without any interruption. 
And also, it looks like you're using a longer lens this time, so all the busy trees do go into nice bokeh. So I like this photo, and I think this one is a really great execution of this spot because I've seen you photograph this multiple times, and I recognize this place. So good job on that. He's one of my OG light and light light and lines boot camp students so it's great to see him reusing this photo spot again all right so we have this nice wall i think this one's from addy we have this cool interesting um, portrait of this this dude here really cool hat and sunglasses um i think just looking at this specific photo i see some natural textures within this wall and it's busier here and less busy here. So I would have maybe scooted him this way. So that he was like here. That way he wasn't like butted up right against this busyness here. And also I like the fact that he's looking at the camera. But also I would have wanted to see a photo where he was looking this way. Um, really nice even lighting. As far as lighting I don't have any concerns here. And I think as a portrait it's very nice style portrait there is just an overall vibe for everything going on here so really good job on that let's see and then we have another photo we have a cool subframe going on for this particular photo we have this doorway and then um, nice lighting side lighting coming straight from the side here and I think because there is this sign here I would have also wanted to see since the sign is here, how it'll look like if she was posed like this. So just thinking about how to balance it because there's also there's this piece of art here. There's a sign here and having her on this side might have balanced it more. I know it's not going to be a centered shot that way, but you're going to have visual balance between the left and the right and using this subframe to capture the entire scene. So that's something that I want to think about there. Um, but overall, I like this photo and I think I also wanted to see if Next time, if you scooted back a little bit more and included more context of the subframe, that maybe may would have made it a little bit stronger of an impact as far as the subframe goes. All right, so how many photos do we have left? Two more. All right, so we have, now we have this other cool photo of these waves. This is, this is like a piece of art right here. So we have the waves in the front. We have the swooping waves this way. And then nice lighting in the background with the three birds. I don't know how you're able to get these three birds there every time. But it looks like it's super perfect. Um, I think my main... I, there's not too much feedback I have. It would just be more like if you can somehow do it. Like if you were cropping this from another photo. If you had a little bit more gap on this side to match the gap here. That's pretty much the only thing that I see. Everything else is really nice. I'm not sure if it's possible to get lower so that you have more visual interest of the waves here. But I don't think I have any business critiquing a photo like this. I think it does look a little bit dark. But other than that, this is an amazing kind of ocean scene. And then we have this last photo. I think it's from Elliot, maybe. Um... So this is a silhouette photo, and I, I love the fact that there is nice cloud texture here. We have the texture from the natural subframe here. And I think for this photo, it's always like there's a lot of negative space here that you could have used. If you got down lower, you could have had it so that, because it looks like you can see that you can see his legs and all that stuff. If you got lower to the ground, you could have got it so that his legs were here. And the guy was standing up here with his hat that way. Oop, that's that's a big hat. Let's see. Like that. So thinking about how you can get the figure into the full negative space, you know, the highlight negative space, and then so that his silhouette would have been there. So thinking about those opportunities, because it looks like you have the perfect setting to do this, but I just you just needed to get a lot lower to execute that shot. So next time you see that, think about that. As far as one other thing that I see too, it's kind of like the spacing between here and here. This is like almost double. So just scooting over to the right just a tad so that you can even out the spacing. So if the subject can't be moved, you can always move yourself to kind of bridge the gap between these types of spatial differences. All right, so I think that pretty much wraps up the 
photo critique. Um, if you want to have your photo included next time, please check out um, my course, my Light Lines Photography Bootcamp, and see if you're interested. Then you'll be able to submit photos with the assignments through there. If you are a past and Light and Lines Photography Bootcamp student and you didn't get a chance to submit the sign, look out on your email for the March critique. And um, I think that pretty much is it. If um, like and subscribe if you want to see more Fujifilm photography content hopefully every single week I'm trying to do like two videos every month at this point um, and if you don't already follow me on Instagram at Reggie B photo for new tips tricks and tutorials ever every single day sorry about that all right um, that's it for me remember to get out go shoot and I'll see you all in the next one